Hello everyone and welcome back to Altium Academy. I'm your host Zach Peterson and you can see I'm still in the podcast studio today and what we're doing today is we're going to look at part two of our discussion on inverted F antennas. And what I'm going to show you in this video is how to create the CAD data that you need to put an inverted F antenna into your PCB layout. Now there are really two ways to do this. One way you can do this is to use copper fill to draw out an antenna and you can technically do that with any kind of antenna. I believe that the best way to work with these types of antennas and other RF printed circuits is to create a component that has all of the data in it. So I'm going to show you how to create that component. Make sure to hop into Ultim Designer and follow along. Let's get started. So to get started creating an inverted F antenna as a component for use in your PCB, you of course need to create a component in a library. So you'll need to get started in Altium Designer doing that. Before we jump into that, I want to bring up a couple of things. So first of all, why should you go the route of creating a component? And what is the alternative? So I like to create components for RF printed circuits for a very simple reason. And it's because number one, I like to reuse them, but number two, it's a lot easier to pick them up and drag them around if you create them as components. You can do that with any RF printed circuit, not just antennas. I think it's pretty common to do it with antennas because that is one of the most common RF printed circuits, but I've done it with Wilkinson dividers. And you can do it with any other uh, type of RF printed circuit you like. Another type of RF printed circuit I've done it with is substrate integrated waveguides. Those are just two examples, um, but there are many others. Now, what's the alternative? Well, the alternative is to use copper fill but copper fill can create issues with short circuit or clearances, and that's why it's better to create a component because you can assign a component type to that component. And the type of component you're gonna create is called a net tie when you're working with an inverted F antenna. Just to show real quick the structure of the system that we're working with here, here we have an inverted F antenna where one of these terminals is of course a signal terminal and then the other one goes to ground. So you've got two terminals here, one of them going to ground. If you have this copper connecting this terminal directly to ground, what's gonna happen is you will get a short circuit warning from your fabricator when they start to review your fabrication data and compare that against your net list. So I've had this happen before when I neglect to set a printed circuit to a net tie type of component whenever it's connecting two different nets together with copper. So they look at this and they're gonna say, oh, you have a short circuit here, this must be a problem. And then the fabrication house is gonna send that message to you and they're gonna ask you if this was an error. And then you have to go through the process of explaining it to them that no, this isn't an error, you should ignore this. I've had this come up again from an assembler where they test the board after assembly and then they say, we have a short circuit between ground and this other net. And they don't realize that this short circuit here when measured in DC is actually intentional and then they flag it as an error and then they ask if it's a defect. Keep this in mind because it's very important to flag that as a net tie because if you do that, they will then know that this short here that you have with this piece of copper is intentional. So let's jump back into Altium Designer here. What I've done so far is I've created a uh, schematic lib and a PCB lib. Now the schematic lib is where of course I'm gonna create my symbol. And my symbol is really simple. Um, you can just create something like this basically, just a rectangle. And I'm gonna just name it inverted F. We need two pins here. So pin number one and pin number two. With pin number one, I'm gonna name this designator one and then we'll call this my input. So this is where my uh, signal is gonna come in. Now this other terminal here, we'll give it designator two and then we'll name it ground. So terminal two here is going to be this connection back to my ground pore on the surface layer. We can just kind of fix the sizing here and then there's one last thing that we need to do. We'll give it a designator prefix. So I like to use A for antenna. It also helps to do something like give it a comment and then give it a description here. Now the component type, the component type you assign right here under type, you wanna select net tie. Now, should you have net tie in BOM or no BOM? 
since this is going to be a printed element, I prefer personally to use no BOM. And the reason for that is there's really no reason to put this in the BOM because there's nothing to assemble. I've actually had jobs go through where something like this was included in the bill of materials, but then assembly gets delayed because your assembler is expecting a component to arrive that matches this designator. And so they're looking in their BOM, they see something associated with this designator, and then they say, oh, there must be a component to assemble. So I prefer to leave this type of component out of the BOM. That's why I select no BOM. You could also do net tie in BOM, but then make sure to put in the comment DNI or DNP. So that's going to ensure that they know that this is not anything that they need to assemble or place in the printed circuit board. It's going to be fabricated as a printed element. So now that we have our symbol, we can go into our PCB library and then create a PCB footprint. I'm just going to rename this here and now we can start creating our footprint. So before we go further, we need to decide on some lengths here. The lengths that are involved here that we need to select are, of course, the width of these microstrips and then the lengths here going from the input to the right and then back here to ground. So as I mentioned in the earlier video, the bandwidth and then the input impedance are essentially tuned by shifting this leg either left or right along this portion of the ground connection. Just for simplicity in this particular design, I'm going to just select some lengths here in millimeters just based on a calculation of the quarter wavelength for this section targeting a 2.5 gigahertz signal with DK equal to 4. We're just going to keep it simple. The next piece here is, of course, the width of these traces. What's a typical value? So typical value can actually be seen by looking at some examples. Now, I found this older application note from Cypress. They have a couple of good examples of inverted F antennas um, that are targeting Bluetooth. And you can see here some typical values that they use for separation and then for uh, antenna width. So here they use 65 mils. If you actually scroll up here, there is another example that they show. And you can see here that they're using a 20 mil width. So just to keep things simple, we're going to go with a 20 mil width. And that's what we're going to use for the width of our traces in our example inverted F antenna here. So to get started, um, what we're going to do is we're going to use fills. We're going to use these with 20 mil width. So here we have 20 mil already set for the width. And then this other dimension in length, I'm actually going to do it in millimeters because that's what I've already figured out here for my values for length. So just to kind of speed this up and get through this, you can see here that I'm just going to use this section and I'm going to copy it around here to then make my F shape and take advantage of some rotation here to make these connections pretty quickly. Once I make these connections, I can just start merging them together to make a complete uniform shape. And then the next thing we need to do is set this value for the total length. So I already have that calculated here. That's the remaining portion of the quarter wavelength. I can just set that here for my total length. I'll bring this back down so that they're all connected. And there we go. That's our inverted F antenna. So it really is that simple. Now the last piece that we need here is of course our pads. So here, if I select the pad, I need to then make sure that I of course assign these pads here where we're going to make the connection to ground and to our feed line. So the pad connection that I have here, I want to make sure I also assign the correct designators. So if I look back at the antenna symbol, you can see here that uh, designator number one is for our input and that goes right here. Just set this to designator one Let's select my other pad here. Sometimes you need to use the selection filter, but I'll select my other pad. This is designator number two and that's it. So this is basically it. This is our inverted F antenna and this is now ready to put into a PCB layout. Just the last thing that we have to do is of course add a footprint here. We'll select my other uh, library that's in this dummy project and we'll just hit OK, hit OK and we're done. So now we have an inverted F antenna component. And of course, we've set this as a net tie. And that's really important because once we put this into the PCB layout, 
then it will short those two nets. And so we wanna make sure that this is of course designated as a net tie. Now, last thing that we wanna do is we want to make sure that we have applied solder mask or removed solder mask where appropriate. Now, for this particular type of antenna, there isn't really a requirement to remove the solder mask, but I've discussed this in the past. Solder mask is lossy. Generally, I prefer to remove the solder mask from the conductors on an antenna. So to do that, it's really simple. You can just take this and we would wanna copy this over to the top solder layer. Now I have this in the top solder layer and I can just go back here and then paste this back into the top layer. And so now when I look at this in 3D, it's all gonna poke through the solder mask. You'll be able to see the conductor once this is put into your PCB. Whenever you're making RF printed circuits like this where you have to essentially bridge two connections, such as a signal connection and a ground connection with conductor, you do want to make sure that you designate this as a net tie. And that's gonna be for any kind of RF printed circuit. I don't care if you're doing an antenna or if you're doing like a Wilkinson divider where you essentially are shorting two differently named nets. Whenever you do that, you wanna make sure that you assign this as a net tie. So now that we have this created to place it in our schematics, of course, just go back to the schematic lib and then click place, and then you'll be able to place it in your schematics along with all the rest of your components, and then you just wire it up just like any other component. Thanks for watching everybody. Hopefully this shows you everything that you need to know to design RF printed circuits as components, including antennas that you want to use in your PCB layouts. Make sure to hit that subscribe button. Of course, leave your comments and questions in the comments section. And last but not least, don't forget to call your fabricator folks. Yeah.